set on the astral flight if he wants to. Oh, oh, no. oh. oh, oh Cavs cannot get it! Fanatic laughing straight to the bank. Stretching strikes, not sure if it's gonna hit. Don't know if it'll matter. Broke blade mids. also does more damage. Nice scoop back. Mickey goes him into the waiting arms of Yike. Cavs grabbing that kill. I'm never dead. I'm hitting it. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. That's a man. That's a man. That's good. That's good. The top father reigns supreme in the third game, but maybe not necessarily in the way that you would have expected. Regardless how you toss or turn it, though, it's G2 that is on match point and might seal the deal right after this next game. And I want to focus this segment around Broken Blade just because it's so, it's not like the usual way in which we would usually sing his praises, right, Goldberg? But it is nevertheless very impressive the way G2 played around and with that TF. I think it comes down to how you play around with the information you have, how you base your decision around them, and then actually how you execute on it. And the way that G2 did all of those, th those things through Broken Blade was absolutely phenomenal. Now, I was a bit surprised because I still, I saw it like when they first picked the sack and banned the sign, it kind of shows you want to swap. But G2 was not really ready for the swap. But even though that happened and G2 was caught off guard, I think still think Broken Blade manages to come out on top of the swaps, even though he has like the worst swap pick compared to the sack. And I think we can just go straight into the, some of the mid-game yeah. replays right. that we have here because they illustrated pretty uh, pretty effectively. In a situation like this, where Broken Blade is caught on the side, what I really want you to look at instead is actually the minimap here, because in this situation, it was very difficult for the Fnatic to find access either around tier two, where Broken Blade were pressuring, and the Dragon at the same time, because Oscar did not have TP. So the moment that Broken Blade sees this, he decides to push in another wave. When he does this, it's so much easier for them to just say, okay, I'm out. Now I going to Drake instead. Yeah, Broken Blade pushing these waves just gives his team options. Basically, they can choose to contest the Drake late with his ult, or he can just get the tier 2 tower top. Either way, they're coming out on top. Uh, yeah, the two situations, you can see that Broken Blade just... Like, the first situation was Drake, right? He was on top and just baited two people, and now it's just Nash, which is even better, and he just outplayed them mechanically and just uh, offers so much for his team. Yeah, and what we're going to see here is the upcoming fight is that Fnatic is actually going to get them one kill. They're going to share one for one, but then Fnatic is going to kind of overreach into the zone control of G2 using their tools a bit too deep here. Maybe you can break it down a bit. Yeah, too. but you can pause it already here if you want to. Like, just look at the current state that you have, how it's coming in. Minimap again, you're looking at the a soul. you're looking at the members that you have. Everyone is just getting caught up in a chokehold where there's so much space over on the side of G2 instead to actually play this game. And Aurelia and Soul is still not there. So if you roll out the clip, you can see how well G2 actually orchestrates this team fight instead of finding the initial play and then actually continuing with the play yeah, I want to critique Fnatic here for going too deep when they get the kill. Here they can just push out their waves, Reset and take control of Nashor again. But here they're gonna run into a show here. And here you see here, Broken Blade is completely untouched. The Relic Soul is used, and now Fnatic is gonna go past this point. And look, no one is dealing with Broken Blade. He's free hitting on the backline, he's completely ignored. And eventually, Fnatic has committed so deep they actually can't get out. And he's gonna end up killing everyone here in the, cross in the crossfire. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think Fnatic kinda misunderstood how they wanted to play the team comp, right? And they always like went too deep, which creates so much place for G2 to play. Regardless, Nuke, do you also feel like they kind of lost the plot in terms of they're like, this is not supposed to work, and G2 um, forcing the map movements, making sure that Broken Blade is still getting the pressure on the tower. Do you feel like they lost their head a little bit in the game plan? I think, yeah, I think they overfocused uh, Broken Blade, especially on side. That like a TF it goes, it's like really hard to catch him, and they did, did it on like crucial timer, like the Drake one or the Nash one. So, so I think they kind of lost uh, their cold. Overall, what is your feeling in terms of Fnatic and how they can bounce back? Have you seen enough positives to warrant um, a Silver Scrapes? I'm a Silver Scrapes merchant. I would love to see it. Uh, I mean, especially this game, you can, like like I said, Fnatic kind of drop down a bit. And I don't think if they can like recover from this, I think G2 is going to win the third game. So I think Fnatic has to change up the draft. Like, you can't just first pick Sack and go for the swap when you clearly are not as experienced as G2 in this scenario. So I would like them to, to see, to give more tools into their mid and jungle. Try to maybe like look for Talia. Yeah. I think yesterday Talia was a power pick in the BDS versus Fnatic series, but today it's going completely untouched. Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing all these things, but I can't help but get flashback to Montpellier again, where it was a 3-1 scoreline as well in favor of G2. Like Fnatic, they came in with the momentum. They got the first game and sure, that's what the momentum extended towards to. Now you've been broken down and it's a complete opposite situation of what you had yesterday. It's about finding that mental reset and just kind of saying, okay, backs against the wall, fake, reverse sweep coming through now and then take it all the way. Yeah, well, GB, you mentioned Montpellier. G2 actually won the last five finals versus Fnatic. This is a trend to buck for sure. Talk to me about these picks to watch, Finn. 
Yeah, I mean, there is the Kalista. Hansama is kind of synonymous with Kalista and Draven. <laughs> and I think this game, he had a really good game. He was, went a bit under the radar, but he had some really crazy plays on the bot side. And just having that Kalista for him, I think, is just such a comfort for uh, G2. So maybe if uh, Fnatic goes onto the blue side, you can also consider banning the Draven and taking the Kalista away like they did in the first game. I'd love to know if we already have the, the side selection, if uh, my producer Jasper already has the info. Fnatic blue side. Nuke, what but do you think they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna come? I mean, either it was like yesterday, Bill, right? Uh, Talia was contesting speak like Finn said and they will look to first pick it uh, with Oriana Ban because this matchup is very hard for Talia or they will go away and try to first pick the Kalista but there's still this thing to take into account the, the lane swap which is really annoying when you're playing Kalista but I think at this point they shouldn't care and just go yeah. for it right I agree fully. Yeah, because that's also what worked against BDS yesterday which was like we came in with these ideas but it didn't really work for us so we needed to go back to what was originally our style yeah. right mm -hmm. and when you're doing that it sucks, right? Because you want to play the best League of Legends possible, but right now that is the best League of Legends that Fnatic can play. It is when they take these skirmish comps. It is when they take what can fight you in the early game. It is when it disrupts whatever game plan the enemy team might have, and then you draw them into your universe and you fight them there. Oh, it's so frustrating for Fnatic. G2 could be lining up for their 14th. But yesterday we wrote off Fnatic completely. Even in the third game we did, until they turn it around and they turn it on, they play best when their backs are against the wall and there are no games games left to play in this spring if they don't win this one and they don't bring us to Silver Scrapes. I want to see it. I know everyone wants to see it, except if you're a G2 fan, of course. I wonder what they're going to pull out of their hat, and I hope we go to Silver Scrapes. Let's head over to our casters. I certainly hope so, too. Shocks. Game three, obviously, Caps putting on a heroic performance today. A lot of standout performers across each game, but the last two, a lot of Azir split pushing. Bringing yeah. home wins for G2. I wonder if that's something that's going to get taken away in the ban phase. You have a stop to think that like it's just this man just throwing his wand. At I don't want to like down. undermine the team sport, <laughs> but it kind of just is caps, right? I mean, I believe that G2 team fighting was much better sure. in yeah, that yeah. game, uh, and I think that they were kind of set to end it. Ultimately, Fnatic kind of dropped the ball, I think, a little bit in the mid game. So as long as they can remain focused and try to find the momentum that they found in the first game. There's definitely a way for them to turn this around. The question is, how are they going to do it? Can we get a little bit more stock standard in terms of how we approach the laning phase? Draven, I've just Sion, Oriana taken away from the side of Fnatic by Ash. And what will be the final ban here from G2? Will it be the Volley Bear? Do they consider it a problem enough to ban it? Well, it looks like it's going to be the Rel. So first pick for Fnatic is the Volley Bear. It's the Volley Bear. Setting Razork up. An early aggressive jungler. G2 can obviously, even with the Scion band away, still try to set up a lane swap here if they want to. But given the early game power of a Rula Bear, perhaps they go for something different. Oh, Re I didn't love the Rek'Sai last game. Though. I think Rek'Sai's value is as a flex, but the jungle half of that flex feels much worse than the top side half of that. Not to say that it's completely useless, no. but it's, uh, its impact, especially compared to what we've seen from Yike, Definitely feels I mean, look less. at the Bowl of their game from Yike, right? It's like, yes, the flex pick is valuable in the context of the team, but if you look at what has been successful for Yike, maybe give him something he wants to play. I think it is also just worth going for the Jacks here and just saying, hey, we're going to plant this up on the top end and not worry about it, because realistically, you get a great matchup in the jungle. You're going to be completely fine, but they're not going to go for it, actually. So they are going to try and keep that flexibility, and they're going to be the Talia taken instead. Talia has been an incredibly strong pick across multiple different regions, and we're going to see if Caps can try and pilot this to victory now for G2. I like Talia. I think that she's a great mid laner in terms of what she can do on a side lane and her impact in team fights can be massive. Azir was a common response we saw yesterday in the Fnatic versus Bidu. Bidu? BDS Bidu. series. Yeah, the Bidu. Bidu. <laughs> um, uh, so it makes a lot of sense. Going to be locked in for Humanoids. Normally we would see the AD carry secured here. Callista, Varus. Don't expect illusion, but maybe they want to save it for the second <laughs> half. Because Man, we did I feel see... like you're manifesting Lucian right now. But... Well, actually, I was thinking Ezreal. Ooh, uh, safe for when sure. I think of Noah, I think that he is one of the better Ezreals. I mean, if not the best Ezreal. But Varus is also fine. Like, that's the predictable. That's the usual. And so, uh, yeah, so far, a very solid first draft from Fnatic. Nothing too crazy. I'm curious as to how G2 round out their draft, whether they want to confirm where this Rek'Sai is going, or instead they want to lock in an AD carry of their own. Yeah, I imagine it would be an AD carry locked in just to try and get themselves into a decent spot. And um, Zeri could be an option here. 
And Sama oh, hasn't hands. played it, though, I was going to say. <laughs> like, I think that is the problem, is that Zeri is such a strong pick, the hands isn't willing to prickle. Don't so you going to go back can. towards the Jinx. Uh-oh. They're doing it again. They're doing it again. Sion is banned. Perhaps so the goal is to have Fnatic ban out more safe tanks, and then they don't do it? Maybe it's the... Are we coping, or are we strategizing? I'm pleading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, negotiating. You're negotiating. <laughs> they don't know you're negotiating, but you're negotiating. Renata going to get taken away Makes again. Sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Nautilus is probably the next ban. Yeah, sure. Same as game last game. And then, honestly, I could see his Akban just coming through here anyway, just making sure that Oscar running can't get his hands on it. Um, and then... You're already taking a good amount out of uh, Oscar and his champ. Oh, sorry, I'm looking the wrong way around. I think, um, yeah, take away the TF, just trying out something that's going to stabilize Oscar in that top lane. Could go for the the Zac pick himself if he wants to. I'm, yeah, because I think Fnatic are asking the same questions that we're asking, which is, do you think they're going to lane swap? And if they do, what top laner are they going to play? If they don't, then support becomes a bigger issue. Now, with both Renata and Blitzcrank taken away, you're immediately looking at Nautilus and Thresh as the two answers here for G2. Well, Nautilus is going to be banned, so you're now opening up for a Thresh, which again doesn't indicate anything. You could also go for the Lulu, which does strongly indicate what you're going to do. The question is, did G2 want to reveal that just yet and then save their top lane pick for last, which again could be a tank or it could be a carry. And it depends on what Fnatic are forced to blind pick. I mean, G2 can just lock Zac here. You've essentially, yeah. yeah. Right, there you go. So now Oscar's... We're looking at a lane swap, generally. Uh, Cassante. Yeah. Oscar's essentially played three champions. Rogueblade called it out on, on Wednesday when we recorded the podcast. These are the, really the only three picks he was scared of Oscar playing. We saw the TF game yesterday from him. It wasn't super hot. So here's like a call out from G2 on to Oscar's overall champion pool. Cassante would be comfort, but champion who doesn't thrive in the lane swaps we even saw I wouldn't the hate game. the Orn, to be honest. I think Orn could actually do relatively well in Hey, you can just farm out, but I'm going to go back towards the Cassante. Jun, eyeing up the Rakan. I get, I, there is an argument here where you take the Lulu away and you go on hit Faris and you've got Lulu on hit Faris and you're just wailing away in these turrets as well if you do end up in a lane scenario, but going to go for the Rakan instead. I feel like it's Lulu, gentlemen. <laughs> don't don't yeah. Lulu into existence. If it's not Lulu, it might be Melio. Fresh. Kind of you know what? How about you, me? <laughs> no, stop. Rob. Can you run? So help me God. I will demolish be... on you, me? Yes. Probably. How about that attitude? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thresh. All right. I'm just going to say I'm fire, boys. That's all I'm saying. Um, locked in here. Of course, the disadvantage is every time you uh, play or interrupt the Volibear Bear queue, he gets a reset on the Rolling Thunder. But some good tools for the Lantern to kind of make sure that Han Sama can stay safe in this fight against the dive that the Fnatic have put together. And another very similar game situation, I think G2 likely to play for the swap at this point. Can play standard lanes and not be too concerned, but Fnatic are very much ready for this eventuality. We'll keep track of the first minute of the game to see what uh, Fnatic do to try and read the play. I will say though that Rakan is not the strongest laner, and obviously you do give a lot of power to Varus, but I wonder if G2 look at these matchups and say, you know what, we can actually get pushed in the bot lane 2 versus 2. It's Thrash Jinx, it's not the worst. But we have to remember that Fnatic can also initiate a swap if they so choose. Like well, I don't see why they would do that. Against the Jinx, it's tough. Ultimately, last game, it was Fnatic that forced the swap, and it didn't pay off for the Zac like they hoped that it would. Once they returned to the standard lanes, that Twisted Fate got to a point where it was uh, a lot stronger, a lot more valuable on that front line of Fnatic. They just couldn't win fights anymore. We'll see how the approach is this time. It's been a lot about swapping in this LEC Finals. Something that we weren't expecting based on how the Spring Split has gone, but is the reality that we live in. We're jumping into Game 4 as Fnatic fight to bring us to a Game 5. Will we swap champions? Or will it be four back-to-back -back splits for G2 for the fourth time in this organization's history? Welcome to Summoner's Match point for them, of course. Most successful organization in the history of our league. Just continuing to extend that lead across 2024. With the most successful player we have in our league as well with Caps. I mean, this would if he wins, this would be his 12th title in the LEC, which is just an absurd number of titles for him to have picked up. Yeah, and again, for Fnatic, 
their last title was when Caps was their mid laner. And I think for this organization, it's so critical as they, you know, look ahead towards international competition that they know that this modern era, the modern era of Fnatic is not defined by Caps and that they can reach those same heights. Minions have spawned. CG2 stacking up in the bot lane. Are they considering a delayed invade here? Jonah's going to spot that out. Should be able to ward and get away to safety. Has the ability to scale the W if he's in any danger. Here comes the delayed invade and here we go. Good information though. Sweeping out, they assume two, maybe three people, but G2 not playing with perfect information anymore. This is very awkward. They're being corralled. Another one for Noah, stronger overall, courtesy of the Hail of Blades. Mickey taking a decent chunk, but it is going to result in a split jungle now. Is Wait, we're standard lanes. We are, we standard, but Broken Blade is here. Oh, yeah, okay. oh never mind. <laughs> we're mostly standard lanes, but that's a Zac. Good bit of poke, flash forward for the play. They're just trying to get Noah's flash out early. And keep in mind, Yikes here for the potential follow-up. He has the red buff as well. I mean, Broken Blade is losing a whole wave right now. He needs to TP back to look top. At, look at Razork though. Razork hid in the enemy jungle. He TP took the to blue buff. So now you can, as you say, TP down, and you've got Razork here. Wait, but so they get the TP now. They TP back to top. Oh, but they're going to turn. To they're going to turn onto Fnatic. But now they can turn back. Fnatic. Man advantage. Four members here. But G2 walk away. I think Razor made a mistake. He is went he on towards freeze? Hansama and Mickey instead of going on towards uh, Yike, who was caught in the enemy jungle. I think with the numbers advantage that uh, Fnatic had, they could have just killed Yike and then still made it back up towards the top side to cover. But they don't end up picking off Yike and I mean, G2 like, get away with it. We put it into context. Noah's lost his flash. Oscar's used his TP. Broken Blade also used his TP, but he's now got the wave in a state where it's basically frozen underneath this tower. Yeah. He still has the cannon minion there. I imagine that's going to slow push back away from him eventually, but the wave and a half that he lost initially, he gets back thanks to the fact that Oscar had to commit his TP bot to, to stop the dive from happening. And this is big from G2 because now Yike can set up for the repeat gank. It should have cost them more. BB making the aggressive level one play, but they play it phenomenally. And now Noah's got nowhere to go. Flash forward, the knock up, the chompers, the flay back. Noah's now running. G2 going to turn away. Jun just trying to get the hell out of dodge. One more auto from Hansama should finish it. Level three for Noah, tries to get a bit of damage back. It takes longer than expected, Ooh. but first blood for Hansama coming through. And this was the other part that we didn't get to hit on. The fact that Razork didn't get any of his bottom camps because G2 would take them and he had to go top. And now, Caps still needs to be careful because Razork is on the top side of the map, but he will just back away from Humanoid. But that meant that Yike knew there was nobody who's going to answer him when he went for that play on bot side. And G2 say, you wanted standard laning, this is what it comes to. Razork trying to keep his mid laner alive. Caps and Humanoid locked into 1v1. The jungler is a bit of the same. Unravel oh, Earth flash away from Humanoid. Clean thus far, but he needs to get Soldier of Razor coming in to try and finish the job. The minion! The scuttle crab! Blocking his escape! An ally to Fnatic, no doubt! Razor trying to get the stun. Broken Blade can now look to come in. The Elastic Slingshot, where's it gonna go? Does he want to commit on a Humanoid? The answer is yes. He autos the tower. He brings it back in Psycho. He flashes! And he lives! He's out of there! What a play! Across all fronts! Fnatic! Humanoid using the flash to dodge away from Caps to set up the kill for Fnatic. And BB sailing gracefully underneath the enemy turret to finish off Humanoid in response. So this is the standard lanes that we were missing, <laughs> Jelly. Oh God, we got a bank. <laughs> Wait, humanoid, oh, humanoid, he doesn't have flash, no remember. Flash. He's walking the wrong way. The flickback's already hit, and that's a Rek'Sai coming over the wall. Mickey going in as well. Nice, nice slide and glide. But can he get away to safety is the question. Volibear is on his way. Humanoid trying to create space Battle between him and Yike. Speed. But Razork is powerful. Is going to find the stun. That's going to be big damage on a Yike. Another flick back connecting. Do they have the follow-up damage to finish off Humanoid? The 2v2 stronger overall for the side of Fnatic. Not quite enough for Razor to body block everything. Caps able to finish the job with auto attacks. But now Fnatic descending upon Broken Blade. They find the stun. Oscar looking to follow up with a Q3. They need to interrupt this elastic zone shot if they want to try and find the kill. Broken Blade kept his passive in the previous play. But there's nowhere or no one around, excuse me, to support him. Fnatic dominate on the top side river. It's an overcommitment from G2 this time. They chase Humanoid into the river incredibly deep. 
and it's Razork that's there to respond. We draw your attention to the minimap. You notice Razork making his way to the top side. Volibear is still one of the strongest early game skirmishers. They take down Yike and they use their numbers to win out against G2. And really nice auto attack from Humanoid as well. He's running the fleet footwork, so autos to get the speed up from the fleet footwork, which barely buys enough space from, from Yike to get the Volley Bear involved as well, and then knock back onto Broken Blade. They're just able to shut him down with the roam up from the support. And frankly, it was fortunate the G2 were even able to grab the kill back onto Humanate. It was a single large rock where Razork anticipated the back step from Caps, clicked, Caps forward stepped. It would have hit the Volar Bear, but because of that slightly incorrect prediction, Humanoid ultimately goes down and brings the trade a little bit closer. Gold now dead even. Four kills to four. Nobody has touched an objective. There have not been a lot of plates getting hit whatsoever. It's just an even match here in the early game. Now, the consequences for both sides is that Jun roaming in that play and the fact that Hans was able to secure first blood means that Hans has a pretty sizable advantage this early on against the Varus lane, which you don't typically see considering the scaling element of the Jinx. But in the top side of the map, it's all Oscar. He's finding advantage. He's going to find through. another one. No passive for Broken Blade. He goes in, he goes out. And this is exactly what I was just talking about. 2 0 now, 3 0. He finds a solo kill onto Broken Blade, who's not even level 6 yet. He's going to be the strong point for Fnatic in the early game. And perfect timing there as well. Caps has started to roam up. It just hit 6. They wanted to make a play onto Oscar in and Broken Blade trying to bait it, but just goes that little bit too hard. And Oscar in is able to punish as a result. So G2, the play fizzles. And on that bottom half as well, Noah did end up getting zoned off of some creeps as well when Hansam and Mickey. We're still on that bottom side as Jun ran, roamed up towards the early skirmish, but Mickey now spotted as Razork finds him. Play on a Razork, hook not going to connect, Yike fishing for the follow-up. Razork's going to walk away for now. Flash forward, the Lantern, Unraveled Earth going to get laid down, flip back on Razork is clean. Knock up there as well from Yike. First kill to give it over to Hansama, he's getting excited, the resets are now coming through, he's looking for one more onto Noah, Jun trying to body block everything he can, the clan comes out a little bit late. Knock up there, Noah going to get knocked down, and oh boy baby, Hansama, three kills in eight minutes. This game won't stop, G2 want to crank it up to 11, and with a third kill now for Hansama, the tower open, he's going to open up this gold lead even further on the bottom half of the map, PV being a nuisance trying to proxy, but has been caught. Likely to fall. They need to get the CC down, though, to stop the Elastic Slingshot. Takes his as much time as he oh, can. He it drops. He knows that Oscar can just interrupt in mid-flight. With the Cassante W. Broken Blade Wait, going he in. Can't does he TP? Does he TP? He can't. No, he's no just way. buying time. I think he's just trying to stall he's the wave. He's trying to get the wave. He knows as long as it's just Razork, he doesn't do enough damage. Now he's going under the tower, trying to backstep, gets one more blob, goes in, just uh, deletes most of that wave, and will at least stop a push-out response from the side of Fnatic. Honestly, I'm a little surprised by the behavior there from Broken Blade, but hey, he makes it work somehow. Now the roam comes in from Caps and Yike. No level 6 for Yike yet, but level 7 for Caps means here comes the Weaver's Wall. Yike, level 5, that's the setup. Caps might not even need to use the wall, waiting for the easy knockup setup. Pull back there from G2, they see the TP, they use the lantern, they walk away. Good use of resources. Do they go for the run back? They know still that Oscar Renan... Oh, no, he's paced. Oh, oh he's paced. no, no. G2, if they suss this out, they got Tremor Sense. They see two. If they blind predict that Oscar's gone, oh, that's going to be embarrassing. That's going to hurt. Flick back connects onto Noah. Immediate hook follow-up. This time, there's no cleanse. And now it's a 4-0, Jinx. And there's no flash for Noah to get away from that either. Razark will pick up a Constellation Prize, the Void Grubs, but this bot lane is completely out of control. The, every time they've tried to lane swap, they could have just been trying to kill the bot lane for Fnatic. But it's a 1.8k gold lead now for Hansama. This Jinx is huge. And that means there's that much more pressure on Oscar, the strongest point on the map right now for Fnatic. He needs to find a way to make his lead a lead for the rest of the team because Jinx is going to be a problem in these fights. And Broken Blade being at a deficit isn't going to matter as long as he buys time for a couple of Hansama auto attacks. The most impressive thing from G2 this game is just how they've played around their opponent's TPs. We think back to level one, forcing Oscar to use his TP bot to just waste time. 
You know, the fact that they had to draw him all the way down there and then he has to walk back to top, allowing Broken Blade to TP back to top after getting the flash out from Noah and then ganking that bot lane. Just an incredibly well laid out early game plan, which is paying fruition as Hans Hammer finds himself with a 1.8k gold lead. And Broken Blade wandering in just to oh, harass no, no, Noah. Oh, does good no. damage in the 1v1 as well. The Varus is already so far behind. Broken Blade is too, but you're going to favor the Zac in this one. Takes a bit more time, perhaps a rushing strike. No, that's going to be a flash, a little unstable matter. Insult to injury here on the bottom side. And that's what I wanted to highlight, was just how far behind Noah is. Obviously, you've got the 2k gold lead, but experience-wise as well, he's almost two levels behind Han Sama, and this is now getting to the point where this has to be the Oscar and Humanoid story. If Humanoid can get to a later portion, he's going to be fine, but G2 are just running away with this early game. But the problem is, now that you've made the swap, Broken Blade is starting to catch up a little bit in terms of the gold lead. He's put Noah even further down, and the one strong point, Oscar, is now laning 2v1 against Mickey and Han Sama, the strong lane on the side of G2. It feels like they're just outmaneuvering Fnatic on the map right now, and the options are getting smaller and smaller. And you just lost another wave on the bottom side because you're trying to get Noah back into the game for Oscar Rinnan as well. So the BB getting to collect that and get the kill is massive, and there Noah. is the TP response. Going to be in trouble again, Jun. Can he turn this play back? TP advantage, Broken Blade on the way in, looking to rinse and repeat what happened earlier. Stretching strikes, Otto's the minion, pulls him back. Mickey and Hansama on the way in. They're going to take their time deciding who they want to donate this to. It will be Han Sama, but Noah. Uh, I mean, they focus shut down. Oh, Humanoid finds the angle in mid lane. He and Raz were desperate to get back a bigger lead. A much needed play for Fnatic as Noah is being ruthlessly bullied. You highlighted it, Dracos, the TP advantage for Broken Blade. He solo kills him, but then he TPs top, man. The poor boy doesn't get to play League. 0-5-0, zero, zero. the gold lead is 2.5k now. It's going to be a tough road for Noah to get back into this game. And even on the cross map, you're going to see Han Salmon should be able to get so much damage on this top side tower. You're going to get a Chemtech Dragon. Not really the end of the world for G2 and Oscar in now underneath the tower, but should be able to escape away from this. But Hans Hammer's just got to take the top end because there's no one there to defend us. You've got to think about the impact this has on your mental as well. The repeat ganks, the trying to stay calm. You know you're at match point. G2 in a position with this, they will win their first spring split of our format. Remember, they failed to even make it to the finals of last year. And... Uh, Noah's in someone who's come up clutch multiple times for Fnatic when they've needed him, and G2 have set that back from the very start of the game. And I think you can, I mean, the problem now is it just takes so much time. It takes so many resources for Noah to come back into this game. Time and resources that Fnatic at this rate will not have. It's not an on-hit Varus. It's the lethality Varus. Being behind feels like a death sentence. And we talked about Oscar earlier. He still has that lead, but Humanoid, Another player we have to look at. He was clutch so much of the regular season. So many of these is years game. It has been him on a side lane, finding these picks, finding the 1v1s in the series against GX, against Jackies, to single-handedly win that first game. And now we have to wonder if he has enough left in the tank here in the game four to take Fnatic to Silver Scrapes. It's going to be incredibly hard. As you look at the map, G2, they've got the push now with Hans on and Mickey moving down to the bottom side. They want to take that last outer turret. From that position, Caps gets to use these long side lanes to push out, cover potential plays in mid. You can start to look towards objectives, establishing vision on this bottom side of the map. And Fnatic, they want to try and interrupt that by attacking BB, moving towards the opposite side of the map where they might have strength, but you're just too slow. G2 have already pounced onto the bot lane turret. And that's a full health tower for G2 on the top side. It's dire straits right now for Fnatic. Oh, he's going to clear the wave. The Rockus. He wants, I think he'll... Oh, they'll be uh -oh. standing in front of us. <laughs> nice idea there to slow them down. G2 continuing to push in bot lane. Oscar, very tanky individual, but is he tanky enough for the knockup? Yike, ulti is going to come out. Jonathan has to do his best to interrupt. Good knock on a Yike, denies the play. Nice all out coming in from Oscar. Noah finds the kill. Gets a bit of money in the back pocket and a sign of hope for the side of Fnatic, but G2 will not take their foot off the gas. They've set their sights on that mid lane tower. Humanoid doing what he can to respond to the top lane. Fnatic need to keep responding to the aggression from G2. Good cross map on the top side to get Humanoid a bit more gold. Crucially, getting Noah that kill gives him a small lifeline as Yike overextends and Fnatic find another. And it buys the time the Fnatic need back. G2 had the advantage on the push on bot. They were going to be able to reset. 
group on mid quicker, group up faster, abuse the fact that they had these leads from the attack speed buff that Han Sama has. But with Yike overextending, G2 have to placate, they have to play more passive, they can't get these advantages. So it is the turnaround in the tempo advantage. And now Fnatic can actually group up, look for push on mid, look for some of the uh, control that they need on this top or bottom side of the map to hold for bot terror, to hold for the dragon in two minutes time. And it's important when you look at the gold at the top of your screen, you see a 700 gold difference, but it's more important to look at the individual differences in lane. As Yike caught out here from Fnatic, they find an excellent pick. A bit more control, a bit more gold back for them. And again, Hansama is the gold for G2. If they kill this Jinx, Fnatic are favored in every single fight. And now they're already looking to get themselves a pretty sizable lead, leveraging the Herald, leveraging the pick they found onto Yike. Love this from Fnatic. Great pick. A second one onto Yike. They, uh, they secure the bottom tower. They're going to convert it into another. The Dragon spawns in a minute's time. G2, are they really going to try and force this fight? The Herald is just walking off. Broken way walking up. Mickey gonna get locked down, they're gonna delete him right as the fight starts. Broken Boy debating. Steps up, finds the auto, pullback doesn't really mean anything. G2. Very questionable engage there from G2. They just give another kill over to Fnatic. They're happy to take that. The Herald secured another charge. And uh, Fnatic, considering the position of their AD carry, they are still being proactive on the map. They're still finding opportunities to stay alive in this game. And now Fnatic can reset, push mid, threaten mid tower, and threaten the dragon as well. And if you start to stack up some of these dragons, G2 aren't going to be particularly happy about it. Only thing that they need to worry about right now is Humanoid will need to go towards that top half to clear out that wave and at least get the push to make sure there's no counter punch from G2 onto the top tier two. But I think Fnatic in a really good spot now when it just comes to controlling the map states. So have to keep our eyes on Hans, of course, for the side of G2, but Fnatic have done a beautiful job coming back into this game. Noah's still at a massive deficit, but his job now isn't really to do damage. It's to keep mid push up as much as possible, to poke a little bit here and there, to leverage that ulti, and to take the time that he needs to, to get a few more items under his belt. Hans Hama often on these hyper carries, and anyone on this Jinx really is going to feel like a ticking time bomb, but thus far, Fnatic have done a beautiful job making sure that he's not a problem. Looking to take him out. Excellent cool. lantern from Mickey to stop the play. This Still, time Noah had the boys. Had the boys, but hadn't got the opportunity to try and move in towards Dragon. You still have push here for G2 on both side lanes, but Fnatic should be able to deal with this reset and get out towards those side. Humanoid might be the next point of pressure for G2, though, as they try to trade the yes. presence on bot to top. Trying to push away. Nice flash backwards, Unraveled Earth. Looking for the setup. Humanoid just barely able to walk away on that one. Broken Blade now TPing in, but here comes Oscar Ren, and that's a damn strong Cassante. They're gonna have to respect it. Four members for G2. Should just break the tower, knowing they've got the Drake in the meantime. Ultimately, the trade of the tier two, but G2 want to keep fishing. Flash forward, knock up onto Humanoid. Hansama getting excited. One reset now coming through. Extra damage onto Oscar. Noah off to the side, just not really doing much damage yet. The Fnatic holding on. G2 get the tier two, they get the kill. Bolivar in the mid lane. Gonna get the mid tier one though, actually not gonna be able to, but he had a bit more damage under his belt, but G2 being able to back away will be able to keep that pressure in the mid. So Fnatic end up sending all the members to Dragon and G2 counter punch in top exceptionally well. 10 to 10 is the kill score. A thousand gold separates the teams. It's unfortunate for Fnatic the Humanoid lost his life on the top side just because originally had a 1.5k goal lead. Cap securing that kill helps close that gap significantly. Still a death cap advantage in favor of Humanoid means that he's going to be a very strong Azir for these upcoming fights. But G2 seem to wisely be avoiding these full 5v5s and instead are trying to play around picks because they have to respect Oscar and how strong this Cassante is. We all saw what Keen was able to do this morning. When this champion gets ahead, it can be terrifying to shut it down. Definitely can. It'll be hard, even with a Thrash or Rek'Sai as Act, to stop this Kazante from running through these fights if his lead continues to grow. Hasn't built any of the more traditional anti-crit itemization, not seeing a Randuin, not seeing a Frozen Heart from him yet, but once he gets a bit more MR under his belt, expect that we will see more focus on making sure that Han Sama can do nothing to hurt him in these exchanges. And Oscar also a guy who's not afraid, hold that thought. Jun, picked out, will just force the lock at cooldown away. 
This still gives space to Fnatic though to get the mid lane turret. And Sam are going to come to try and wrap around. Razork is shifting topside, so maybe they want to look for a pick, but there's so much vision up on this topside for G2 because that's where they just a minute ago put all their pressure. It's more Fnatic having to clear out all that space, and they still haven't been able to put the pressure they want to on towards mid. So I think Fnatic wanting to get some control around the Baron area for themselves, but not getting much more out of it. Good diligence from G2 to lay down some vision in that pit. With the Zier this far ahead of the two item mark, Nashers and the Death Cap. Fnatic have a pretty fast Baron, even without Noah bringing much to the table as the lethality of Varus in terms of Baron damage. Tension, I think it's safe to say, on the faces of Fnatic. With some smiles, some optimism. Will we make it to game five or will G2 close it here? Nail biter of a game four. Either side with an insurmountable advantage. Mickey stepping up. Good hook onto Jun. Play backwards, but Jun dashes out to safety. Meeting Mikhail. Mickey's catching himself, but Cap's the one who's caught out. Broken Blade not doing a whole heck of a lot. Hansama trying to auto over the wall, but he hasn't found the reset quite yet. Ghosting now through the fight. If he finds one, they're likely to take more. Yikes, still living. The reset's now going to start coming through. Flashback from Noah trying to stay standing, but Hansama looking at attack speed. Oscar Renan, the frontliner, the one protecting the rest of this fight for Fnatic. Push away. Fight fizzles. Two for one exchange in favor of Fnatic. Only Humanoid gonna die in the play. Great pick from Humanoid. Getting caps. I was a little bit worried once Humanoid went down because as we've already said, Humanoid kind of has to be the main damage source for the Fnatic lineup. But because they've taken out caps and Hans Hamel wasn't really in a position to get enough damage off, it actually works out well. You can see here, it takes a long time with the shield for caps to go down. Really nice play from Humanoid. But as you rightly said, it takes a little while the ultimate from Hansam and already connecting onto anyone, but he's ultimately untouched on the backside, forcing Fnatic to retreat. They still win out on the fault fight, ultimately, because they walk away with two kills. But you can see how close and how tense it really is. Hansama only continues to get stronger. His Infinity Edge is on the way. And when it comes through, is really where G2 are going to be at their scariest point, now that Caps has that death cap completed as well. And that's the IE. Right oh, there it Q. is, right, never mind. <laughs> 22 minutes in, had enough gold when he returned. Base in the end of that play, 5-0-1, the score for the Jinx, truly terrifying. Fourth item, Lord Dominix, feels like the death sentence for Fnatic, but the wall now coming in. Noah caught out, manages to make it to the other side, but now he's locked in the 1v1 versus Caps, trying to find the good side steps. will make it away, but just doesn't have enough HP. Shut down for G2, clean pick in the middle lane. Broken Blade, though, overcommitting on this one. Walks back to the wall to try to get support from the rest of the team, Fnatic. Caught in the 4v5, hoping to pick off Broken Blade. Push back from Humanoid is not what they needed. Does not connect. G2 happy to walk away, happy to run towards the Baron, knowing that major cooldown is not available. Broken Blade's E coming up at just the right time, and Humanoid whiffs the ulti, gives way for G2 to start off the Baron. Noah still 12 seconds away. Razork needs to find the type of play that Yike found earlier today. As the ult, he can get into the pit. Oscar, Oscar takes absolutely no damage. Good poke now coming in. Broken Blade trying to disrupt the backline. All of G2 immediately turn off the objective. Oscar pulling Broken Blade back, but he's not hitting the backline targets. He wants to be endless CC from the Zack and the Rek'Sai. Hansama now dominating the front line, freeing up spo so much space for him to do his work. John running, trying to peel for Oscar. Noah now coming in, but Oscar drops. John drops, and Noah is not strong enough to face the wrath of Five members of G2, nobody's going to drop. And they're going to go right back to the Baron. G2 find the fight that they needed. They get onto Humanoid. They deny Fnatic access to the pit. And just like that, they see Humanoid in the bottom side of the map. Immediately Caps is like, we can catch Noah. He pushed too far up. He tried to get onto the mid wave. And by the time Fnatic come in, it's already a 4v5 and Han Sama, great positioning over the wall to make sure that no one can threaten him. I don't even think Noah oversteps, he just doesn't respect the ability for G2 to collapse. Good old D to start things off from Caps. Then Oscar being the front line, you look at how low G2 actually gets, but Broken Blade doesn't care. He and Yike dive onto the back line. The carries play around that and Razork really isn't able to do much. Gets thrown around, G2 secure another. And then when Oscar in and drops, it's just a sad day for Noah realizing I've just died and I'm going to get sent straight back to the fountain. Now it is really hard for Fnatic. They're at a huge deficit. 
G2 don't want to give up this Drake. Caps is already pushed in the mid lane wave. Wall coming from behind. Noah again isolated the front line. Can they protect him? Backstep from him is good. Seismic shove not going to do much, but Broken Blade again is just completely unkillable. And Hansama has already gotten a reset. Four members of Fnatic retreating, grouped up. Yike looking for a way to knock them up. Unstoppable from Cassante. The scoop now coming Humanoid. in. Humanoid wants to keep this game going. Jordan Oscar still standing strong, and Cassante is powerful. G2 overestimate themselves in the face of Fnatic, in the face of Oscar. Oscar, they come up short. Humanoid saves the day for Fnatic. Humanoid ascends to Godhood with the shuffle to connect onto Han Sama to rip the game out of G2's hands and present it kindly at the feet of Fnatic. Humanoid shows once again why he is absolute cinema with a fantastic ultimate onto hands. We're going to look back at the play. A fight that starts off heavily in favor of G2 once again. A nice ultimate to cut off the escape route of Fnatic. They're funneled in. The ulti from Hans connects onto Noah. And then Razork drops. The jungler gone. Now Fnatic are on the retreat. But G2 overstay their welcome. Caps is trying to find a flank. The ultimate there from Humanoid connects onto the carry they need to find. And with him still alive, Fnatic finally have the damage to win out the fight. Perfect follow from Jun in that as well. The grand entrance as Humanoid has scooped Han Samet in towards him. The synergy between these two has been crazy impressive in that last team fight. And just like that, Fnatic, they find that window back into the game. And in the fights to come, Hansama has to play flawlessly. If he drops, Oscar Renan is unkillable. They just do not have the damage that they need to obliterate that Cassante. The Rek'Sai, the Zac, yes, they're hard to kill, but they are not killing Oscar. And how many times have we seen Fnatic been able to rely on Humanoids? Another rely on this is here. Cops trying to force them back, but they're going in. He's looking to lock up Hansama. He's going to CC! No hesitation from Fnatic! In the face of elimination, they will make the play work. Caps on the back side of the fight, set to fall now, knocks down Oscar, but it's still, overall, it's close, it's a 3v3. Yike, Broken Blade, can they find the angle? Can oh, they the keep this fight going? Nice Q3 going through, Oscar should be able to take over, but they have to try and limit it. Razor trying to find the healing, a little bit extra coming forward, the shielding now going in as well. Oscar stepping in, but he doesn't have the damage, he doesn't have the ability to stick on these targets. They're slowly but surely trying to win out on the fight. Unstoppable now, interrupts, pulls away, Mickey should just be able to shut through that health. It's all eyes on Oscar! Oscar and John versus the world! Oscar and John to hold on to hope for Fnatic as G2 desperately trying to claw this fight back. Who's dying? No one is dying except for John. Jun, maybe. Finally, they will take down the Rakan. Jun's got nowhere to go. The pullback is not enough. Jun escaping. Are you kidding me? He will die in the end. The Jinx Rocket sidestep. This man refuses to drop. It's the tower who takes him in the end. My God, what a fight. There's not even any objectives to play for. Fnatic were just sieging in mid. They see an opportunity as Hans is left isolated in the mid lane. Mickey can't provide the, the, the peel. The flash isn't fast enough. But the response from G2 is oh. just as strong. They get onto the back line. They take out Noah. A snipe from Yike onto Humanoid shuts him down. And then it's just a battle of the bruises. I didn't even catch the hook from Mickey on the first time around. As the shuffle comes through, he snipes Humanoid on the back line, which locks him up for G2 to deal with them. That could have been a very different fight if that hook hadn't landed. But with this, Yike has damage. BB has damage. And Oscar Eden ults but just cannot get through the beefcakes that G2 have. I feel like in an extended play, if he has a year, he will eventually win, but it just doesn't matter. There's too much sustain. He doesn't have enough damage to work through it by himself. And Jun, it's a heroic effort, but at the end of the day, it just feels like it resets everything back to even. G2 hold on in a play that might have been a death sentence as we return to live. We see what the state of the map is after a quick reaction from Jun. Everyone is on the Baron. G2 moved in quicker, so got some vision down. You can see they've got it over by the blue buff. But there's the wall again. Nobody caught out on Fnatic this time, though. Noah, caught in the pinch, does get flicked back. Cleanses, walks away. Locket going to keep him relatively healthy. And again, Broken Blade constantly looking for these angles. Judd battle dancing back to his front line. Oscar ready to step forward with the Q3. Good hook from Mickey, but maybe not the ideal target. Sky Splitter going down. Fnatic hope to find a bit of poke. Arrow going wide. Both sides committed to the 5v5. But off on the side again. Broken Blade looking for the angle. Hansama the one that matters. Caps the one that matters. Which side can find backline access first? The poke is coming through though onto Hansama. 
BB needs to try and find some way to get in onto this, but Humanoid and Noah are constantly up at the top side of the, the lane, and they cannot find that entrance. 15 seconds until the Baron. Both these teams fighting for river control. G2's waves and top and bot are more favorable for them, and Fnatic will need to answer soon. But it's not too scary for the time being. 50 seconds until Dragon. It's a tense moment between these teams. 20 kills to 23. The bloodshed is real. Here comes Broken Blade on the flank. Ulti going wide. Push back. Denying Broken Blade access to the back line. All Fnatic now need to retreat. Oscar buying as much base as humanly possible. But Hansama does a lot of work here. Unstoppable now as he pulls Yike away. Oscar now trying to escape. The blobs on the ground for Broken Blade. It looks like it's just going to be a one for one. Frontline for frontline. But the TP is there for G2. They will keep their top laner standing. Noah over the wall can do absolutely nothing. And it's just Jinx taking over a quadra for Hansama. They're hunting Another for Penta? the Penta. A bit of cruel irony for Noah. He was on the opposite side of this yesterday. Now he'll have to come face to face with the fact that it's Hansama who is slowly walking him down. Hansama who is securing the pentakill with G2 at match point. Two pentakills in this series for G2 with Hansama able to secure another and with what might be their fourth title in a row on the line. G2 find the team fight that they need and both objectives. G2 are able to find the fight. The idea from Fnatic is good. Humanoid turns his attention onto the tank. They say, just melt him, kill him, quick, quick, quick. Oscar is tanking on the other side, but Jinx is just too strong at this point. He's not able to buy enough time, and it's TP from Caps. Again, it's all about time for the Jinx, and Hansama is given so much room to play with. A Quadra surrounded out with a Penta means that G2 are poised to take this series, this final, and another title for the belt. And Humanoid is trying everything he can to keep Fnatic in it. The shuffles have been great, but Broken Blade is just too tanky. They just can't quite find the damage when they need it. They just can't quite find enough to put G2 back in the box. And now, they're setting up on the map. Vision is everywhere. Waves are in the favor of G2 as they'll be able to push them out. And they have to try and hold the base. They have to try and hold on for just that little bit longer. Gold favoring G2 very heavily. The Baron buff as well. Two minutes left as they try to stack their waves. You can see Broken Blade not hitting in the mid lane. Wants to make sure that everything is crashing at the same time. Exactly that. They have push in top, but they have just caps sitting in the brush, allowing for the slow push of the minions in the mid. The Zac was doing the exact same thing. They want to create these three points of pressure. But Fnatic are going to match in mids to slow that push down. This gives an avenue for Han Summer to push in this wave and secure a tower completely uncontested. The Jinx is at full build now. Full late game Jinx is something that any League player has experienced before and is a terrifying thing to deal with, with the GA on top of it, even if Fnatic get the pick onto Hans. The question is, will it even be enough with Mickey lying in wait to provide the Lantern for safety? So much pressure on Fnatic to find the perfect angle to force these fights. They do not kill the front line of G2 nearly as well as G2 can kill theirs. The Lethality Boris was supposed to get ahead, was supposed to be the poke threat onto the Jinx, onto the Talia. Maybe if Noah can find a couple of arrows, hitting Hansama, hitting Caps, he could start this fight out favorably for Fnatic, but it's so impossible for them to kill Broken Blade at Yike at this point in the game. You need the, the miracle of play between Jun and Humanoid again. Just find that moment where Hansama takes that step too far forward. No summoner spells available for him. Will make things a little bit easier but you have to sacrifice something. It's going to be a terror you have to give up in order to make the play, and it looks like Fnatic might go for now with Oscar and abandoning mid-wave. Caps watching bot lane, you can see. Just completely stops moving. Ready to Weaver's wall in if he needs to. Ushering in the cannon minion as Oscar walks up to contest the wave. More falling away here. Humanoid off to the side, just laying a bit of damage down on a Yike. This is where Yike is so valuable. Every time he goes under the ground, he can spot out if Humanoid is looking for a flank, if Jun is coming in from a different angle, and all he's doing is getting this little bits of information for G2 to make sure that they don't get caught out. Weaver's wall, Jun off on one side, taking his time, does not want to burn any resources. He doesn't have to. That's the wave stepping up. Instant engage. Humanoid. Hansam on the backside, still untouched, but Jun goes in. There's no fall. The pushback from Humanoid is good. Looks like they're trying to take down the back line, but Humanoid is already down, and Hansama is at full. That's gonna be it.
hit the double for Hans. G2 don't have a wave, but I don't think it matters. Breaking down the towers and looking to end it here. G2 have gone and done it again. Humanoid tried his best, but his best was not enough. As long as Hans is alive, G2 will make a beeline towards the base to round out this series. But going in. The last desperate hold from the bottom lane of Fnatic. It should not be enough. There's no way they can do this. Noah goes in trying to kill Caps. He'll get at least one. But as long as Hansama is standing, G2 know that they have the win. He's taken down John as well. And for the fourth time in the organization's history, they're going to get four titles back to back to back to back. They will secure first seed in MSI, and they will lift the Spring Split Shield. An overall impressive split, split from G2. Their regular season was shaky at times, but in playoffs, they cemented their style. The lane swaps, they played around with a lot, but when it came down to the bog standard 2v2s, the, the 1v1s, it was G2 that came out on top. Now we take a look at our trophy ceremony presented by Kia. Incredible stuff from G2 as they lift the trophy. It was hard fought, Fnatic really did not want to give that game four. But G2 once again are the champions of Europe. Heroic performance in the finals. Everyone on G2 having their moments in the final game. It was Hansama on the Jinx. His front line playing beautifully to give him the room and the space to shine. Now we can look ahead towards MSI's first seed. They don't have to go through plans. They have the time to prep, to get ready. But today, a day for celebration. Six weeks hard fought to bring them here. Last year it was spring, of course, that G2 fell short. Ended up losing to Mad Lions in the lower bracket. And this year they wanted to change that. They want to be consecutive champions throughout the entire year. They've secured winter, they've secured spring. And summer, well, MSI is next on the objective. Obviously a challenging hurdle ahead of them, but they will represent Europe as the number one seed against the best competition that the world has to offer. And despite locking in winter this year, they wouldn't make the same mistakes. The sites have been set on international, but they will not make the same missteps. Rain at the top, two splits across all of 2024. And this is what everything G2 have been looking for, bringing in Duffman, working on the mid game, finding success, both splits in a row. They are a team that not wants to only dominate Europe, they want to go to that international stage and show just what Europe is capable of. But it feels like that road, that first footstep on that journey has only just begun with this win here today. I mean, they kept the roster together to only build upon what they started last year. The expectations are high on this roster. And we'll see if they can live up to their expectations. MSI is just around the corner. And they're excited and ready to go. An impressive day for G2. No doubt. They suit up for some final pictures. I mean, when they bring Romano Cop, what can you expect, you know? <laughs> it doesn't matter if he's a cyborg or a unicorn, he's always there to back the teams. Casting will decide to gear up for a winner's interview, I have no doubt. Of course, today belongs to G2. But MSI stands ahead for both Fnatic and G2. I hope we see 17 kill Han Summer at MSI. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be cool. Like I'd be happy yeah. with that. I would like that. I'll accept 15. That's okay, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Specifically against North America would be great. That would be sick. That would be, be optimal. Be, yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we know that they're eager <laughs> for the rematch, that's uh -huh, for sure. Uh -huh. And you got to know that this stays sweet. And I think for G2 as well, now they have the time to actually boot camp. You know, Plains is so close. Well, we'll hold that thought. Moore standing by with a victorious Caps. Let's hear what he has to say about the split and the series. Thank you so much, guys and Caps. Thank you for joining me. Congrats on yet again a 12 title. 13 finals, 12 titles. How does this one feel? 
Uh, I definitely feel, I think, relief more than yeah. anything today. Uh, I think that um, this, the games were very close and they were very like fiesta as well. Like, I know. They, were, they were very aggressive and we were caught off guard a few times. Uh, I think we felt quite stressed in the game. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely just super relieved that we got the win. I can imagine, and especially for us with the rivalry with you guys and Fnatic, it feels like it hasn't been that close for a long time, but now with the way they've been playing, it feels like it's closer than ever. Is it a feeling that you guys had playing them? Uh, definitely. I yeah. definitely think Fnatic played very well today, uh, and I think they caught us off guard on a lot of things that we were, I mean, we were kind of expecting it, some of the things, but we still died through it. So, I mean, hats off to them, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, we're not too happy about that, yeah. but that we got the wins in the end is, 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 is crucial. Of course, I'm happy with that, with especially that. compared to what happened to you guys last year, clutching the winter, not making it a spring. How did you approach things differently this time around to make sure that you were not only going to MSI, but that you were going to grab that first place? Uh, I mean, I think we always, like, we always want to win, right? We want to win the regular season, we want to win the playoffs, we want to win at MSI as well, but uh, we failed last year, and I think we maybe got too... Uh, loose with like a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we kind of were testing a lot of crazy things and I mean sure this time we're also doing the lane swaps and stuff but I think in terms of our, our picks we didn't have like that uh, standard reliable way to win. Mm -hmm. I think right now we do. We just okay. also have some lane swapping going on as well. That's a good thing for MSI. A lot of tools in the box. As I said at the beginning of this interview, 12 title. How do you... How do you prepare for each interview for them to, uh, interview, <laughs> finals, sorry, for them to not feel exactly the same? Because when you're used to winning so much, it must become a habit. How do you not become complacent towards the fact that you have to play at the same level every time? I mean, I think the thing is that, like, league is changing all the time, right? So you really need to stay up to date with what the new strong champions are. Uh, and, yeah, for example, this, like, the lane swap is just a completely different mindset uh, yeah. that we have, even me, some mid laner, uh, obviously, there are different priorities, and yeah, I mean, I think every split felt different, mm -hmm. and this one is like no exception. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely just relieved, not super happy with the performance, to be honest. I think I uh, could definitely play a lot better, uh, but I think winning, despite of that, is, is very important. What is amazing with your caps is that you've been winning so much, you've been in the league for so long, but still, you don't you don't slack, you don't plateau, you keep on getting better, and something that we've been talking about coming into today is. It might be the best version that we've seen for you so far, the most consistent, the more clutch. Is it something you agree on? Do you feel like you're the strongest you have ever been? <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure about today. I think right. it definitely was, uh, was not a performance I was too happy with. I think they were catching us off guard a lot. Um, but I'm definitely happy with overall the level. I think we as a team are just improving a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting way better at, like, playing together uh, and really like mid-maxing the, the team stuff. Yeah. Because I think yeah, last year we were playing more like solo, solo plays, right. uh, but now we're doing really well as a team. So I'm super happy about that. <laughs> Focusing on the forbidden topic that is ahead of you guys, MSI, Chengdu, it's going to be amazing, <laughs> I hope. But it's, what, what is your resolution for this tournament? Yeah, I mean, we just, we really want to prove ourselves. I think it's been a long time since we even did remotely good internationally. So we really want to show that, that there's still hope. <laughs> a new hope arrives, is right? Uh, I think that, yeah, I think, we can, I think we can definitely compete with the best. I think last Worlds, we were doing quite good in scrims, but then on stage, we were kind of soft. Like they had good answers to, to yeah. our strategy and we were, we were relying on like very uh, aggressive uh, snowballs. So when they were not going our way or when we threw a bit too much, that wasn't working out. Now we have some lane swap. Let's see how, uh, how they'll react to that. Yeah, but there are going to be uh, other teams that are ready for the lane swap. Any specific team that you have in mind that you want to face off against? We saw the LCK finals this morning, pending the LPL finals as well. But who do you have your eyes on, Cavs? Uh, I think, so I think especially we'll probably face second seed, right? So I guess right now T1 is, is the team that is, is qualified there. So they're definitely a team to watch out for the, the world champions. Yeah. And uh, Fega is obviously really insane. So that would, that would be a huge series to play, and that would be a perfect time to, to prove ourselves. Yeah, you versus Faker, always something that I love watching, Caps. Thank you so much. Thank you. And congrats on the 12th title. Shocks, over you. to you on stage.